eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. Welcome to the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting of February 22nd, 2021. Uh, we welcome you all this evening. We thank you for being patient with us while we finished up a, a, a different meeting that we were just, just coming out of a closed session on. Uh, this evening's meeting is a regular meeting or what we some refer to as a voting meeting. Uh, therefore, the items on our agenda this evening have been discussed at uh, typically at least a couple of meetings prior. Therefore, you may not see the level of discussion that you might expect in a school board meeting. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of voting on items that have been, that we've, we've gone round and round about and come to conclusions on uh, and gotten ready for a vote on. If you're looking for meetings with more discussion on topics, you may want to tune into our committee of the whole meetings. They typically precede a voting meeting by one week and those can be found on our website. If you're looking for our agendas, uh, you can go to our website, which is livoniapublicschools.org. You can hover over the school board tab, drop down to board meeting info, and select agendas from there. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll for this evening? Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Here. Mrs. Bonifield. Mrs. Bonifield? We're having mic issues. Hold on a moment, please, everybody. Mrs. Bonifield is having technical issues. Okay. We can see her and she, we can see that she is here, but we can if we can note that. We just okay, got the thumbs sure up, will. Mrs. Bonifield. Okay, Mr. Centers. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Bradford says here, President Burton. Here, we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to also mention that uh, our board wishes very much to be meeting in person. Unfortunately, as we discussed at last month's voting meeting, we are the only seven individuals in our 16,000 person school district that are not permitted to meet in person. As soon as we are legally permitted to do so, believe me, we will be so happily meeting back in our boardroom again. Uh, we are uh, advocating to the state uh, to let school boards meet in person in addition to all of our staff and all of our students. Uh, as soon as that happens, uh, we'll be meeting in our boardroom and you are most, most welcome at that point to be continuing to tune in uh, online or to join us in person if you wish. Uh, one of our climate and culture goals that is very, very important to us is that of respect. Uh, we believe very firmly as a school district uh, in respect amongst our students, amongst our adults, and between our adults and students. Uh, to that end, uh, we will absolutely be treating one another with respect uh, in our school board meetings. And we ask that any uh, folks from the public who are participating via audience communications or any other, uh, any other method uh, to also adhere to that request of treating one another with respect. We find that the very best way to teach our children. Uh, Mrs. Jarvis, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We are on to item three of our agenda, which is communications and we have a principal's week resolution. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolution establishing the week of February 22nd, 2021 as principal's week in Livonia Public Schools. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And I will turn this over either to Mrs. Jenkins or Mrs. Oquist. I'm not sure which one of the two of you would like to address this item first. Mrs. Jenkins is going to start and then I will wrap us up. All right. 
Thank you. Uh, good evening, President Burton, members of the board, Superintendent Oquist. Tonight, we would like to take a few moments to recognize a special group of staff members here in LPS. Our dedicated principals continue to amaze us with their passion, their compassion, their creativity, and their obvious love for education and for our schools. Our principals take the lead. They set the tone for our students and staff. They provide guidance, leadership, and they show their professionalism in all that they do each and every day. For the past 12 months, our principals have shown this even more by doing whatever it takes to provide calm, confident, and caring leadership as we continue to, nav to navigate through these challenging times. Our principals take ownership in creating learning environments in which students feel safe, connected, and challenged, and cared for. Working hand in hand with district leadership, they have provided these things and so much more as our normal routines and school day structures have changed so much in so many different ways. They have truly gone above and beyond for our students, our families, and the LPS community. Their flexibility, creativity, and passion have, have truly shined through during this pandemic, which is exactly what our school communities need. They are a listening ear for our students, staff, and parents while consistently keeping an eye toward con continuous improvement, even during this pandemic. They've read stories via virtual story time. They've led the way in making their schools safe places for students and staff. And some have even become quite adept at creating fun and informative video messages for their students and families. They really stepped outside of their comfort zone to create and maintain that school to home connection. Each year, our district designates an official week to recognize their efforts. Tonight, we are kicking off LPS Principals Week with a special resolution that will be read into the record and voted upon by the board. Joining us tonight, uh, we welcome Kevin E2, who is the Churchill High School Principal and Co-President of LEADS, which is the Educational Administrators Group to which our principals belong. Welcome, Kevin. I'm not sure if you can uh, chime in at this moment for a quick hello. Um, Kevin joins us, but he is also, he's currently in, en route uh, between sports practices for his children. So he may just be listening in and not able to uh, to join us verbally, so. Okay, um, and then right, right after Kevin speaks, uh, we'll have Mr. Centers read our resolution for us. Yep, I was gonna say, um, I think what we should probably do at this time is move on to the resolution. And I'd like to ask um, Trustee Dan Centers to read the resolution. Absolutely. Principal Week's re Principal's Week resolution. Whereas Principal's Week is dedicated to re recognizing the significant contributions of Livonia Public Schools, school principals, and the commitment to providing quality educational experiences and guidance for their students and whereas energetic and inspiring school leadership is essential if schools, teachers, and support staff are to implement college and career ready standards and assessments and whereas school principals play a vital role in the success of students and act as the liaison between the school and the community it serves. And whereas we join with educators, parents, and students to raise awareness of the importance of educational leadership. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the trustees of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education recognize the week of February 22nd, 2021 as School Principals Week and encourage all citizens to thank and support the efforts of school principals in our community. Thank you. And I believe we're still at the same status with uh, Mr. E2. So I'd like to now turn it over to Superintendent Oquist who would like to add a few words. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jenkins. And thank you, um, President Burton. Uh, we are thrilled to bring this resolution forward um, this evening, and um, our principals uh, carry both a tremendous uh, 
privilege and a huge responsibility. And Mrs. Jenkins, you did a remarkable job um, really capturing the essence of their role, especially in this very unique year. And I can tell you, we would not be where we are today without each and every school administrator um, who has helped us get to this point. From the very first day of our closure last March, all the way through our summer planning and throughout the fall um, and now this winter, every step of the way their focus has been on the students and staff um, for whom they care each day. And their efforts have really been tremendous. And, and as you laid those out, Mrs. Jenkins, um, they have been creative and dedicated uh, and committed every step of the way. And again, we're, we're so grateful um, for our school principals, our assistant principals, our coordinators, our athletic directors, and all of those who serve in a leadership role across Livonia Public Schools. So we could not be more proud of this team and we congratulate them uh, and honor them on this special week. Thank you so much. Do we have comments or questions from the members of the Board of Education? Mrs. Bradford. Yes, thank you, President Burton. I echo the sentiments of Mrs. Jenkins and Mrs. Oquist. Uh, I'm just really proud of our leadership uh, shown this year, well, every year, but especially in this uh, tri these trying times. Uh, we have really had our principals, assistant principals, and, and so many people step up and really um, work tirelessly on behalf of the students and the families. So um, their efforts have not gone unrecognized and just so uh, happy to celebrate uh, this week with them and to let them know how much we appreciate all the work that they do and continue to do as we uh, navigate this year and, and into next year. Um, it, it, it's truly amazing and I'm just really proud of each and every one of you. So hats off to all our principals and all our assistant principals on a, on a job well done and, and, and continues to be done well. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Any other comments or questions from the board? Mr. Centers. Yeah, I, I think um, like teachers and cabinet and everyone else this year has been um, incredibly difficult for principals. Uh, you know, they get a little bit of downtime in the summer, not very much, but I think this last summer, uh, most of them did not get any downtime. They've worked just straight through. Um, they, most of them were contributing to the, the back to school plans in some way over the summer. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in getting students back and a lot of that falls not just on the teachers and but the principals as well. Um, so uh, every year, but especially this year, uh, very appreciative of those building leaders and what they're doing. Absolutely. Comments from any other board members? I would just like to add my appreciation. Uh, the, the building principles literally set the tone for the building. And when you think about the different levels of education that our kids either are in or have gone through, those, those tones in an elementary school, a, a middle school, a high school uh, are, are definitely different, but the underlying attitudes are, are the same and they need to be the same. They need to be that of, of passion and positivity and enthusiasm for our district. Uh, and yet they are the one individual who really has to balance staff needs, student needs and parent needs. And we'd like to say that those are always in lockstep with one another. But but when they're not, uh, that principal's got to be the person who's who's going to try to have to make those three units join into one. So it's it's just such an important role. Uh, and it's just so vital to to the like I said, to the tone of our, our buildings. When I think of principals, that's the very first thing I think of is is tone in a building. Um, so I, I just want to extend my thanks to our principals for making Livonia Public Schools a safe and a caring and a joyful place for our students and our staff to be. Any other comments from the board? Seeing them, we have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mrs. Bradford, could you please take the roll? Yes. Uh, Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. 
Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3B, School Board Recognition Month. And for this, I will turn it over to Mrs. Oquist. Thank you so much, President Burton. We are thrilled to be able to share this recognition. We had planned to do so in January when we were together during School Board Appreciation Month, um, but we are pleased to be able to do that, albeit virtually. So I'm going to have Mrs. Jenkins kick us off um, and then uh, share a few words afterwards. Okay, thank you, Superintendent Oquist and President Burton. As with many things over the past year, um, plans change. We have never been as flexible when it comes to making, changing, and then revising again our plans. As we know, as you know, each January, our, our district takes the opportunity to say thank you to our school board members. While we were saying thank you in our hearts last month, we thought that it would be nice to postpone our annual recognition until we were able to meet in person. Well, that didn't work out so well for this month, but we're forging ahead nonetheless. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the special certificates and the small token of, uh, of our appreciation that was uh, delivered to each of you on Friday. We okay. truly cannot say enough good things about this board. As members of a local Board of Education, you join more than 4,000 elected community volunteers statewide who give freely of their time and talents to benefit students, staff, and the community. You may be just seven of those 4,000 board members across Michigan, but you are our seven. And we are so proud to have each one of you at the table. There are several ways in which our seven board members are truly special. Our seven board members are all certified through the Michigan Association of School Boards, making the group as a whole an honor board for the past three years running. This is a huge accomplishment and one that is not too, all too common throughout the state. Each board member has taken the MASB courses to become uh, certified board members, including our newest member, Mrs. Acosta, who may have done this in record time. And the veterans on our school board continue to ele elevate themselves through additional coursework each year. Our seven includes one member, Mr. Dan Centers, who was recently selected to serve on the Michigan Association of School Boards Board of Directors. What an honor, and one that speaks to the level of dedication and, pro and professionalism that is commonplace on our Board of Education. Our seven sets a high bar modeling for other districts. For example, when our board drafted and, ad and adopted a resolution that urges the state to lift the restriction on boards meeting in person, other districts followed suit and used this board's resolution as a model to communicate that message to Lansing. Our seven are leaders. Our seven are forward thinking and collaborative. Our seven are committed to continuous improvement through their participation as one of just four school boards in the state of Michigan to pilot the high impact school governance program, which strengthens the working relationship between the superintendent and the board with the goal of achieving highly effective governance through collaboration, open communication and effective working relationships. Our seven board members do all of this in addition to the normal work behind the scenes preparing for board meetings, communicating with district leadership, families and the community, and arriving at important decisions in, in a prepared and thoughtful way. Our board oversees a more than $150 million budget that provides for nearly 2,000 employees and 14,000 students. It is a huge responsibility and one that each of you takes very seriously. We can see your dedication, your enthusiasm, your thoroughness and your heart. Your work here is a labor of love and that is evident. We are so proud of each of you for your dedication to LPS and to your role as a board member. I would now like to read a resolution from the Wayne County Regional Educational Services Service Agency's Board of Education. 
whereas the boards of education of 33 co constituent school districts of Wayne County promote quality education for all children attending their school districts, and whereas these committed public servants dem demonstrate dedication to their civic duty and voluntarily contribute countless hours of service on behalf of the students of Wayne County and their communities. And whereas Wayne County school boards are strong advocates for the needs of their students in their communities and with policymakers in Lansing and Washington. And whereas Wayne County school boards regularly do all they can to ensure academic success for all Wayne County schools. And whereas Wayne County School Boards understand the importance of, an, of a quality education for its youth and recognize that this is the most important factor in the success of our local communities, state and country. And whereas local control continues to play a vital role in the success of public ed education. And whereas, especially in 2020, there was confirmed it was confirmed how important education is to all components of our society and school boards were under immense duress, pressure and, and challenge to deliver during an unprecedented environment of a pandemic for their communities and thus school boards deserve special recognition for their service and whereas the state of Michigan and the State Board of Education have declared January 2021 as School Board Recognition Month. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wayne County Regional Educational Service Agency Board of Education in the spirit of the School Board Recognition Month recognizes, celebrates, and commends the dedication, contributions, and leadership of the Wayne County School Boards of Education. This was presented and adopted December 16th, 2020 and signed by the Wayne Risa Board of Education. Thank you okay. so much. Mm -hmm. um, also included in your packet is a uh, special declaration uh, issued by Governor Gretchen Whitmer as well. And now I'd like to turn it over to Superintendent Oakwist, who would like to say a few words. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jenkins. Once again, you have captured it beautifully. Uh, I can't imagine a, a better description um, to describe the work of our of our Board of Education. And um, oftentimes we we joke that people may not um, completely understand that uh, you know the folks who are around this screen and our our board members are are not employees, but rather volunteers um, that represent uh, the community that they serve. Um, and and you do so. Um, with such tremendous care and dedication. And you do that every year, but I have to say, especially this year, um, on top of each and every difficult decision um, that you have pondered, that you have listened to feedback, um, that you have responded to, um, you, have, you have risen and um, spoken on behalf of the students and staff that we serve um, in a way that really has set the example. Um, for districts around us and really districts throughout the state. Um, and we are we are grateful for that continued dedication. And um, less people think that they uh, relax in their downtime. Uh, just over the past, I think since November, our board has participated in two different MASB uh, training uh, opportunities over a three-day period, both in November and then again just recently. Um, they had two four and a half hour sessions on a Saturday, learning about school finance and the law. Um, and those are just some of, it. just in the past few months, just some of the training that they have done um, in, their, in their work to continue to be um, an honor board. And, and while they don't do it for that recognition, they truly do it in a desire to be um, as effective and as highly functioning as they can as individuals. And what I see also collectively um, as a team and so we are grateful for each of you and we are thrilled uh, to celebrate you uh, this month. Thank you so much. Are there comments from members of the board? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we are humbled. Uh, Mrs. Bradford, go ahead. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, I wanna thank uh, 
the board, or I want to thank my board members. Um, Andre, you said it great when we said we're a team. Uh, it really is truly a team. Uh, we spend a lot of time and hours together. And, and I think I speak for all of us, we're elected and we do this because we love the students and we love education and we're dedicated and passionate about serving the needs of our, our, our kids and our families. So um, it's a great honor. Thank you for uh, uh, recognizing us. Um, and usually we don't like that recognition, at least I don't, but I appreciate the recognition. And um, I do wanna say uh, we respect each other. And I think that's a, a um, a working board has so much to learn and grow. Uh, we grow from each other, but we also respect each other's differing opinions. Uh, we don't always agree on everything, but we respect one another and we um, work together uh, to make uh, the best decisions possible. So um, that's our goal. And I think uh, we know it, we know our roles and uh, we know what we're supposed to be doing and how to stay in our swim lane and uh, do the passionate work that we do. So thank you for recognizing us. I think uh, we're all humbled, just like Colleen said, by, uh, by all this fluff you're giving us. So thank you very much. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Burton. Um, although it's it's always nice to be recognized, I, I think the real uh, issue here, and somebody used the, the word team, and it's not just a team of seven, it's a team of all of us. Um, the cabinet makes our job so much easier because you provide us with the desire to do our best for the students. You provide us with the information that we need to make our decisions. Uh, if we didn't have that, we would just be a, a disjointed board with no direction. So uh, although we end up making the decisions, uh, it is based on the data and the information that is provided for, for us by the rest of the team. Uh, so I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of the, the board, uh, our cabinet members, Superintendent Oquist, um, you help us and, and make us what we are. Thank you. Mr. Centers, and then Mrs. Acosta. So uh, this year obviously was very different than any other year I've served on a board of education. And I think it's different than anyone could have imagined. Um, the We made a lot of decisions this year that were um, the stakes were extremely high. And, you know, some of these decisions can feel pretty weighty in normal times. And I think this year they felt especially so. Um, sometimes people were pleased with the decisions the board made. Sometimes they were less so. Um, but, and sometimes we agreed with one another and sometimes uh, you know, we, we uh, struggled to come to a consensus. But, uh, everyone on this board spent a considerable amount of time and put their best effort into making the best decision they can and really thinking about kids, thinking about our community. Uh, so uh, I'm very proud this year, more proud than I've ever been to be part of this board and to be part of this district. Um, you know, I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel now so we can look back and smile on everything that's that's happened. Uh, but it's been a very tough year, I think, for everyone. And, uh, it, you know, this uh, it's nice to uh, have the recognition this year, um, but knowing full well that uh, it took the whole community as a team this year to get us through. Um, and that includes uh, our wonderful, wonderful superintendent, teachers, parents, students, everyone working together. So. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Centers. Mrs. Acosta. Thank you. I just wanted to say really quickly that I feel like I'm kind of not deserving of all of this recognition since I'm just getting on here and kind of just writing on these coattails, but I will say that I am committed to continuing to elevate, um, to the expectations that the community has for us as a board. Thank, thank you. you. Any other board members? 
Uh, it it is very humbling. It's awkward. It's a little embarrassing because, as we said, we're 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 not doing it for this reason. Um, but but thank you for your kindness and for your thoughtfulness. Um, it is truly our honor to serve our community in this way. Um, every one of us is serving because we have a passion for kids and a passion for education, and we believe wholeheartedly in Livonia Public Schools. Um, I believe anybody on a board of any organization, number one, has got to be passionate about, about that organization, and, and we certainly are. Um, it's our honor to serve. It really is. Um, it's been, as Mr. Senator said, it, no doubt, it's been the most difficult year uh, of service, but that's true, I think, of anybody in any industry that they're involved in right now. Um, I'm very, very proud to be uh, a part of Livonia Public Schools. Um, it's my honor to serve on this board. Um, the one group of people who has not been uh, been thanked yet uh, are our spouses and our kids, uh, because at times, and this is this year is certainly no different. Uh, they can take the, the the hit or the fallout for the work that we do because we love to do it. Um, it's been it's been a tough year, uh, but we have had a whole lot of support, not only from uh, our LPS family, uh, but from our own families at home. And without that, we could not do the work that we love. So thank you. Any other board members? Seeing none, uh, thank you again. Um, it was very sweet. Um, we will go on to the next item on our agenda, which is item 3C, uh, district update from our superintendent. Mrs. Oquist. Thank you so much, President Burton. We have some great uh, highlights for you this evening. Mrs. Jenkins is going to bring it up on the screen. And each month, you know, we love to celebrate our students and our staff and what's happening in our district. So here we go. Alrighty, so at our last board meeting, we talked about um, and really made a, um, a plea, a strong plea to continue um, our athletics for our student athletes and our coaches and our teams that have worked so tremendously hard. And so we're pleased to say that winter sports um, as of uh, last week is almost two weeks now um, is back underway and we are thrilled and we are proud of their work and their efforts to uh, follow the mitigation measures and to stay committed um, to their teams and to one another. Um, and we are so proud to see them back out there and wish them the very best in what is unfortunately an abbreviated season, uh, but they are back out there and they're they're doing what they love and we are so very proud of them. So I wanted to share some highlights from, um, from those teams as we go through. And recently our uh, Franklin Bowlers uh, just won a, another significant tournament. They continue um, on their great streak um, that they have been on since we started. Um, and we are so pleased to see our athletes and our coaches back out there doing what they love. Throughout uh, this past month, as you know, uh, beginning January 11th for our pre-K through six, and then um, on January 19th for our grades seven through our post-secondary, um, we have been, uh, we're, we ended our pause and back again in person um, from our pause that took place in November. We wanted to share some highlights with you of our students learning and growing together with their staff and teachers. Um, so we have some in-person photos here, um, as well as some great shots from our uh, Livonia virtual crew. We have our uh, music students. We've shared some pictures with you uh, this fall of the creative ways that our, our specials area teachers across the board, whether it's music or art or PE or IT have uh, really found creative ways to keep our students uh, involved and uh, really part of learning and growing together. And so we see our students with their specially created masks that allow them to play instruments with the, with the uh, the covers on the ends of their instruments to keep uh, them safe and keep one another safe, but still uh, making beautiful music together. We see our students proud of their writing work and our students continue to learn and grow. We have some wonderful sharing on social media. Uh, we have some students here uh, from both Emerson and our elementary levels. And we encourage you to follow not only our schools, but our district social media 
um, each Friday. Mrs. Jenkins shares a great roundup of photos from across the district. So we recently had a winter field day at Buchanan and another one at Riley. And I will tell you, our while drivers may not like the snow, I can guarantee you our students do. And so uh, as we flip through these pictures, we see a wonderful outdoor field days and wonderful times at recess. And um, that's what our students love to do. And at Buchanan, I know they included not only uh, their in-person students, but had a special session as well for our Livonia virtual students from Buchanan. As you might remember, the 100th day of school was a pretty big deal. And so it's always fun to see our little ones dressed up as 100 year olds themselves. So we have some photos to share with you from across the district as our students recently celebrated the 100th day of school. They're cute little seniors, aren't they? <laughs> we'll keep flipping through those. And recently, our Stevenson National Honor Society uh, once again held their fleece and thank you event. This is an annual event for the National Honor Society for our Spartans. And this year, a total of 124 blankets were uh, purchased and made and donated along with a special note or video. And so families um, and members of the National Honor Society and members of the community were able to uh, purchase those materials and make the blankets and again, send them back. Um, and a huge thank you to the National Honor Society at Stevenson for once again supporting uh, the effort of Fleece and thank you as they work to provide um, cozy blankets uh, for children at area hospitals. And then a huge shout out to our robotics team, 2832. They made these mask bands for all of the members of our team here at Central Office, and they have donated over 13,000 for first responders and those in our community. So they designed these, they made them on the 3D printer, and then they had a wonderful note to go along with that for members of our community. So a few of us were able to meet with some members of our robotics team recently who came by to donate them to us. And then we want to give a huge shout out to St. Mary Mercy Livonia, uh, Sarah Gilbert, Dave Spivey, and their whole team over there as well as the Wayne County Health Department and Wayne County RESA, especially Dr. Leopa and Mr. Steve Ezekian. Um, all of those members have partnered with us to facilitate getting COVID-19 vaccines for our staff. Uh, that has been a significant development. And we, again, are very, very grateful for the partnership with both of those organizations who have worked to support um, all of our staff in LPS. And then we are very pleased to announce that as of March 1st, free breakfast and or lunch will be available to all students thanks to a federal grant. So any student in the district, not only those on free or reduced lunch status, are able to obtain a meal at either breakfast or lunch or both um, throughout the remainder of this school year. So we will be sending out an information very shortly to families, but we wanted to let you know to mark that on your calendar and again, regardless of status of um, free or reduced status for lunch, uh, thanks to a federal grant and a waiver that is available to all students in Livonia beginning on March 1st. And a huge shout out to our food and nutrition department, uh, Mr. Francis and that whole team uh, for the extra effort uh, that's going to go into making this happen at each of our schools. We're pleased to share with you some information about upcoming bond information nights. So we are going to hold a number of virtual uh, information sessions for our community. We would uh, love to be able to do so in person, but we want to be able to access that and have that available to as many people as possible. And since there are still limitations on the number of individuals that can meet for meetings such as this, um, we have scheduled these virtually for 6.30 p.m. on March 10th. March 16th and April 14th. We will have information posted on our website and we will be going through Mrs. Smith, Mr. Francis, Mrs. Jenkins and myself will be sharing information about the 2021 bond and answering questions that you may have. 
So again, those three evenings will be available um, for community band information nights. And I thank you for letting us share just a little bit of the Livonia pride that shines through in our district each and every day. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Um, if I could ask one question about one of your updates, uh, the free breakfast and lunch program. I know we had, when we began looking into that, uh, there was a question of staffing for that program, which is why we had not, uh, one reason we had not looked into it or, or implicated parts of that kind of thing sooner. Can you address the staffing issue with us? I'm gonna ask either Mr. Francis or Mrs. Smith who have been deeply involved in this process to talk a little bit to that. We've had a lot of dialogue about that uh, with our food and nutritious services supervisor and I'll let Mr. Francis respond to that. Thank you. Yeah, you, uh, you are correct. That is one of the concerns that we had earlier in the year and, and that concern has, has not gone away. I just wanna be upfront and clear about that. We, we are still short in that department, generally are. It, it can be difficult to, to have, hire and keep employees. It's an odd hour type of position and a unique individual that that wants to do that job. But uh, having said that, we consulted, uh, Mrs. Smith and I had, had consulted along with um, Mrs. Juhart, the, the uh, supervisor of food nutrition department, consulted with uh, the MDE, uh, talked with them on, on how it's been going in, in not only neighboring districts, but throughout the state. And we're just going to, uh, Spoke, I spoke with uh, all the principals at the building, secondary and elementary, let them know, ask them to brainstorm on any concerns they might have and tweaks that they might make to their, to their cafeterias or lines. And that's all kind of on a building by building basis. And, and we're, just, we're gonna just go forward. We're gonna um, ask people for, for patience and, and ask people to pull together. And it, the, the, the concern with it is that on any given day, we don't really know how many students are gonna step into line and, and ask for a meal. Um, but we have some backup plans and some backup meals if we run out and that's, that's gonna happen at some buildings. There's gonna be a day that, that the, the main menu item is going to run out because more than expected came through the line and we're gonna have some backup meals for students. But we're gonna take the good, the bad, and, and as one, one of our middle school principals said in our meeting, all the good weighs out all the bad. So it's worth doing and let's just proceed. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you Mr. Francis and thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3D, written communications. Are there any written communications that board members would like to share? No, seeing none. Uh, our next item is uh, item E, uh, 3E audience communications. Mrs. Jenkins, do we have any audience communications this evening? Let me do one quick refresh here. <clears throat> no, no, we do not. Okay. The next item is item 3F, response to prior audience communications. Uh, I do have a response to a prior audience communication. Uh, this is a uh, response to uh, prior audience com audience communications message from February 15th, 2021 regarding remote participation. At our last meeting, a member of our community suggested that even after the current COVID pandemic, that the regular participants in board meetings, such as board members, the superintendent, cabinet members, audience members, and others be permitted to participate remotely. This is not possible because there are strict laws under the Open Meetings Act that school, board, school boards are bound to follow, including participating in person with very limited exceptions. These laws have been modified temporarily during the COVID pandemic and rest assured that our board and our school district will be monitoring and following these laws closely. At this time, the law dictates that participation in board meetings for anyone, including the board, superintendent, cabinet, other presenters, and audience members is only allowable remotely, meaning that the board meetings are not permitted in person until March 31st, 2021. Then starting April 1st and through December 31st, the law dictates the opposite, that the only reason at that time board members may participate remotely is for military duty, their own medical condition, or a state of emergency declared by a local or 
Further, the law states that beginning January 1st, 2022, at that time, the only reason that a board member may participate remotely is for their own military duty. The laws, as you can see, change, and we will continue to keep them to keep abreast of them. The Board of Education encourages members of our community to attend, observe, or participate in our meetings as one avenue of staying informed about our school district. While not required, we have for many years streamed our Committee of the Whole and general meetings live on the, com on the community cable stations, which we will continue to do as long as Spectrum and, allow and WOW allow us to do so. Videos of our meetings are also posted on the LPS website beginning the following day so that people can watch at their convenience. During the COVID pandem pandemic, we also began live streaming our school board meetings on YouTube, which many families and staff appreciate. This has been very successful, and we are discussing with our IT department continuing this service, even when our board is permitted to begin meeting in person again. Please understand that some of these avenues may not be possible when we are meeting off site. For example, when we are meeting in school buildings for a school's school improvement presentation, which is also a priority for our board and our staff. But the public is certainly welcome to attend those off site meetings as well. Please know that the board is open to receiving communication at any time via phone or email, which are posted on our website, in addition to audience communication at board meetings. Our goal is to continue to be accessible as possible. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item four, our consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? Mrs. Bonifield. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. 5A, minutes of the regular meeting of January 25, 2021. Item 5B, minutes of the special meeting of January 25, 2021. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson. Uh, for consent agenda items, there are no comments or, or questions on these. Uh, Mrs. Bradford, may you, uh, would you please take the role on this? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. The motion passes. The next item on our agenda is item six, instruction matters, reconfirmation of the extended COVID-19 continuity of learning plan. May I have a motion, please? Oh, one moment. Yep, when I get there. Okay. Hold on. Oh, shoot, I just lost my... Hold on. Madeline, can you read the motion? I lost my um, feed here. Having a few technical difficulties. Yeah, sorry, I have a te technical difficulty here. I don't know what happened to it. Okay. It's, it's my right split thing. screen. I got to work on it. Sorry about that. That's no. not a problem. If, if another board member has the, has the motion, yeah. Andy, that would be fine. Yes, please. This is Acosta. Okay. Move education of the Livonia Public School School District reconfirm the continuity of learning plan that was approved on September 28, 2020. The plan recommends that students continue to receive instruction either through Livonia virtual or in person instruction in our schools. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bonfield. And Mrs. O'Brien, I believe you will be addressing this item for us. Yes, I will. Thank you, President Burton. Thank um, you. As you know, each month, once every 30 days, we are required by law um, to reconfirm our continuity of learning plan, along with reviewing our attendance and two-way interaction rates. Um, we are continuing to recommend two options for our families an in-person in our school education and a virtual option through Livonia Virtual. 
um, since last month. Our um, attendance rates have been steady. The week of January 25th, we had an average of 93% um, attendance rate. The week of February 1st, 94.9%. The week of February 8th, 95.3%. And last week, it is a little bit lower, but we also had two days less. And our MyStar, um, I talked to Mrs. Monk um, about our average being lower and she said it does average over the five days and she wasn't sure that the 93% for last week isn't due to our winter break. But so our attendance system is our two-way interaction because we take attendance every day in our Livonia virtual program. So we are recommending that we continue to offer those two modes of education. Thank you. Are there comments or questions by any board members? Seeing none, we have a motion to reconfirm the extended learning, or I'm sorry, reconfirmation of the extended COVID-19 continuity of learning plan. Uh, motion made by uh, Mrs. Acosta and supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mrs. Bradford, would you take the roll on that, please? Yes, Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is item 7A, uh, Frost Middle School roof replacement. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District approve the recommendation of the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa to award the contract for roofing replacement at Frost Middle School to Lutz Roofing Company, Inc., Shelby Township, Michigan, in the amount of $2,282,000, plus an additional $136,920 of contingency added to the total summer 2020-21 roofing projects for a total approved amount of $2,000,000, $418,920 and authorize the superintendent or her designee to negotiate and execute final contracts. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And I believe Mr. Uh, Francis, you'll be addressing this item for us. Yeah, thank you, President Burton. Um, the Frost Roofing Project, as we've discussed at the Committee of the Whole and in, in previous conversations, was added on. Uh, we have already approved previously, the board had already approved, approved previously three other roofs uh, to be replaced this coming summer of 2021. The Frost uh, recommendation of Lutz uh, is a company that we have used previously. We've had a good working relationship with them. And just to put out um, for anyone who has not followed with our, our community of the whole meeting or, or seen the previous memos, um, there is a, there was a company who had a, a lower total dollar amount, but as I mentioned to the board at the Committee of the Whole uh, in the post-bid post interviews, uh, it was discussed, the timeline was discussed, and that company had stated clearly that they could not and would not be able to finish the roof project on the district required timeline, so we moved on to the next lowest bidder, which was Lutz. Uh, this is a, a sinking fund project. It is a planned project of complete re roof replacement, and it's based upon our 10-year facilities um, plan that we use, and we recommend this vendor for the board. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mrs. Bradford, uh, would you please take the roll? We have the motion uh, to for the Frost Middle School roof replacement, motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes, President Burton. Yes, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item is item 7B, Central Office Administration Building Abatement. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Acosta? 
move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve awarding the contract for asbestos abatement at the Central Office Complex's administration building to Global Green Services Group, Dearborn Heights, Michigan, in the amount of $70,060 plus 3% contingency on the total project in the amount of $2,100 for a total approved project amount of $72,160 and authorize a superintendent or her designee to negotiate and execute final contracts. Support. We have motion by Mrs. Acosta supported by Mrs. Ba uh, Mrs. Bradford and Mr. Francis. Thank you again. Uh, this is a project that we all know well and discussed many times. It is the renovation of the administration building at the central office complex. And that will be occurring this spring and summer. So the, the first thing that needs to be done before uh, any construction can begin or, or remodeling can begin is to abate any remaining uh, um, asbestos that's in the building. It's a relatively light amount in the overall uh, scope of, of things. So we are recommending Global Green. They were the low responsible bidder. They have done a, quite a bit of work with the district. We have a, a long working relation with them and uh, we, they are recommended to the board for this project. And this is this project I may mention is a capital projects out of the general fund. It's a, a special, and, and Mrs. Smith, correct me if I'm saying, if I'm butchering how I'm saying this, but the capital project is a specific line item fund set aside specifically for projects such as this. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion for the Central Office Administration building abatement. Motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bradford, I believe it was. Mrs. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Yes, Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Bradford, would, would you please take the roll? Yes, uh, Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item is item 7C, boiler replacement at eight buildings. Uh, may I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase and installation of new boilers at Cooper Upper Elementary School, Garfield Elementary School, Grant Elementary School, the Central Office Complex's Administration Building, the Central Office Complex's Maintenance Building, and the Central Office Complex's Armco Building from Sis Temp Corporation, Rochester Hills, Michigan, for a cost of $869,000, and at Rosedale Elementary School and Webster Elementary School from Engineered Comfort Systems, Inc., Taylor, Michigan, for a cost of $257,951.90, plus 8% contingency on the total project in the amount of $90,156.10, for a total approved amount of $1,217,108. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Johnson, and I will be abstaining from this vote because my family's company bid to one of the companies that was listed on these documents. So I will abstain from any discussion or vote on this item. Uh, are there questions or comments from board members on this item? Seeing none, we have a motion for boiler replacements at eight buildings. The, the motion rests by, by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Johnson. And Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Yes. Pres Mrs. President, Jar Bert President Burton, are we going to hear from Mr. Francis on this? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. We, we almost thought, stole your thunder there. Thank you. I, 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 I would not have, you know, been, it would have been okay. Yeah. We, we've discussed it a few times already, I yeah. know, but, yeah. but for the, for the benefit of those who may not have 
caught the first time. Go right ahead. Absolutely, Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Thanks for jumping in. I wasn't sure at what point I should I should say say something, so I appreciate you jumping right. in. Right, any old time you jump in, Mr. Francis. <laughs> I, I, I've got your back, Mr. Francis. Uh, um, so this is another project that's uh, from the Thinking Fund and is part of our ten-year facility plan. Uh, as the board knows, and as anybody who's been following along over the years knows, that each summer and into the early fall, we've been replacing boilers in multiple buildings throughout the district the past few years. Uh, this is a continuation of that sinking fund plan project. And um, just a quick breakdown between the two, two companies. Uh, we have used SysTemp uh, quite a bit in the district. And in fact, they did uh, many of the boilers last summer during those projects as well. Um, the second company, Engineered Comfort Systems, is new to us. But uh, we are, are excited to venture into a, a, a new relationship. They have a couple smaller buildings that they'll be working on. And we do um, recommend these vendors and this project to you. Thank you. Now are there questions or comments from the board members? Thanks again, Mr. Johnson. Uh, seeing no further comments, uh, Mrs. We have the motion for replacement of uh, boiler replacement at eight buildings. Motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mr. Johnson. And Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Dur Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Bradford says yes. And uh, abstain from Mrs. President Burton. I abstain. Motion passes. Thank you. And anytime I skip over somebody, please just jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next item on our agenda is item eight personnel matters, and 8A is teachers for approval. May I have a motion? President Burton. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and offer employment for the 2020-21 school year to the teachers listed on the attached document. Do I have support, support. on that motion? Well, now I have a chorus. Support. I think I heard Mrs. Bradford. <laughs> okay, I heard several, but I... I... Could pick out one voice there. We'll go with Mrs. Bradford this one. Mr. Abate, would you like to address this item for us? Happy to. So the group of prospective new staff members we are presenting to the board this evening is comprised of teaching and social work professionals. They're all well qualified to fill their respective positions and have been fully vetted through our extensive interview process. We are confident they will perform at a high level and represent Livonia Public Schools in a manner that is consistent with our shared vision and collective commitments. These positions have also been included in the 2020-2021 budget and fill areas of need for our district. We are pleased to be recommend, recommending such a talented group of individuals to join our LPS family. And with your approval, we are excited to have them working with our students. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Just welcome and congratulations. Absolutely. It's a terrific district. We're happy to have you. Uh, any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion for teacher's approval by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Bradford. And Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Yes, Mr. Centers. I remuted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. President Burton. Yes, motion passes. Next item on our agenda is item 8B, leaves of absence. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the request for leave of absence listed below. Brittany Cornelier, April 5. 2021. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Acosta. Are there quite, I'm sorry, Mr. Abate, would you like to address this one for us? 
Well, as noted, you have the name of a staff member requesting leave from, from Livonia Public Schools effective April 5th, 2021. This request is in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement for the staff member's bargaining unit. And I ask that you please consider approval of this leave. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion for a leave of leave of absence as a uh, motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Acosta. And Mrs. Bradford, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is item 8C, resignations, and that is for information purposes only. It does not need to be voted upon. The next item is, is item 8D, retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Ba Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bradford? Yes, it is. Okay, go right ahead. I'm back up and running. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for the services rendered by Carol Kerrigan, Laura Clary, Lori Ken Kenny, Stephen Mado, Catherine Reyes, and Margaret Streffen. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mr. Abate, would you like to address this one for us? Sure. Tonight, we honor and congratulate six members of our LPS family who have retired mid-year or have declared their intention to retire, both in the coming weeks or at the end of the school year. As these staff members leave Livonia Public Schools, they take with them a combined total of 141.8 years of experience. On behalf of the administration, I would like to thank these wonderful staff members for the dedicated years of service that they have provided the students of Livonia Public Schools. And I ask that the board, I ask the board to please adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for our retirees. Thank you. Are there comments or questions from the board members? Mrs. Bradford. Thank you, President Burton. I just wanted to make a couple comments. This group here, it seems like we're losing, we always lose really good people, but I did uh, want to just do a shout out to Margaret Streffen. Um, she worked in the uh, transportation department almost 40 years, 30, 39 years, I believe. So I thought that was amazing. Um, more years than my kids have been in the district and uh, she certainly put in a lot of her time and I, I remember how tirelessly uh, she worked for the district in that transportation department. So congratulations to all of them, but uh, just a shout out to, I think her name's Peggy, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. Peggy. So that's pretty exciting. So congrats. Comments or questions from other board members or the superintendent? <laughs> Losing another great group, um, but we yeah. are so grateful to them as you, you know, look at this list each each month, uh, you know, there's certainly tremendous appreciation, a wide variety of roles on tonight's um, list, and we wish them only the best and we, we thank them for many, many years of, of dedicated service. Absolutely. When it, it, this happens inevitably, when there is a list of, of folks who are retiring, there are some that I'm not familiar with, which happens in an organization of 2,000 of, of our teammates. Uh, but there are some folks that are that I know personally on this list, and, and the loss is going to be just tremendous. Uh, thank you so much for all that you've given to Livonia Public Schools, and we wish you a wonderful, happy, and lengthy retirement. We have uh, uh, any other comments from board members? Uh, we have a motion for retirements by Mrs. Uh, Bradford and is supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, item 8E, sympathy resolution for Angela Hillman, teacher and CAPA director. After this motion, we will have uh, the resolution uh, read by Mr. Dan Willenborg. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. It is with a heavy heart 
that I move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached sympathy resolution for the family of Angela Hillman, teacher and Kappa director at Churchill High School. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Acosta. And Mr. Willenborg, would you do us the honor of reading the resolution, please? Yes, thank you, President Burton. Uh, Livonia Public Schools Board of Education meeting February 22nd, 2021, sympathy resolution for Angela Hillman. Whereas the Board of Education was deeply saddened to learn of the untimely death of Angie Hillman and Whereas Angie was a valued, caring, and highly respected staff member in the Livonia Public Schools School District, a teacher of English and theater director at Franklin High School, Kappa director and English teacher at Churchill High School, and whereas she consistently demonstrated her outstanding dedication, care, and commitment to students, parents, and colleagues, and will be greatly missed by all, and whereas Angie will always be remembered with great fondness and with a profound sense of gratitude for the immeasurable contribution she made to our school district, to the students she served, and to the colleagues with whom she worked. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School District offers its deepest sympathy to the family, friends, and colleagues of Angela Hillman. If I, if I may. You may. Um, uh, like like most others whose life was so enriched and powerfully impacted uh, by Angie Hillman, uh, I'm still in mourning and, and you know, at a, uh, trying to come to terms and grasp the loss of such a bright, uh, a bright life force and shining star in our educational community. You know, Angie was so much more than an excellent teacher and an outstanding drama director. She was an energy giver and a life coach, and certainly an inspiration to all. No one shared more care and more passion for her work and her students. She had a, a special gift to turn despair into hope and sadness into joy. She lifted our lives and made us laugh and made us cry in her productions. Angie was driven by details and perfection. She had a unique character about her, one that I describe as, as part General Patton and part Mother Teresa. Uh, she, she had a, a persistence of love in her life and was just always so generous in her, in her encouraging notes or flowers and thoughtful, thoughtful words. Uh, to our parents, Bob and John Hillman, um, please know that we share in your loss and send you our deepest sympathy you know, our love and can't thank you enough for sharing your daughter in, um, uh, in, our, in our lives. Um, her sunshine really made a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willenborg. Are there other comments uh, from board members or cabinet members? Uh, Mr. Centers. Uh, so uh, after Angie's passing, I, I had just a tremendous number of people uh, reach out from Franklin and Churchill communities and, you know, asked me if it, they had heard news and if it was true. And if it was true, they wanted to tell me about what an impact she had on them. Um, she is someone who uh, taught with her whole heart, uh, someone who was uh, extremely generous, who uh, was very giving, who connected with students in a very, very special way. Uh, and I know that her passing uh, is really, really hard on not just the Churchill and secondary communities in our schools, but so many of our, our current students and alumni who uh, were touched by her. So uh, I would like to thank Dan for his his words, I, I, I agree 100%. And uh, she, um, she certainly deserves the recognition for all she's done for our district and she'll be very, very missed. 
Thank you, Mr. Centers. Any other comments from, uh, we have uh, Mrs. Jarvis and then Mrs. Oquist. Thank you. Um, I have encountered few people in my life who have affected the people around them as much as Angie Hillman did. She was a remarkable woman. And like Mr. Centers, I've heard from so many people who just wanted to share the impact that she made in their lives. Current students, past students, uh, alumni, uh, people who just sat in the audience. She was contagious, she was delightful. And to steal from uh, Elton John, her candle burned out long before her legend ever will. Thank you, Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. Elquist. Well, I'd like to thank the board for this uh, special resolution and for Mr. Willenberg sharing that um, with us and uh, those, you know, those very meaningful memories that each of you have shared. Um, I want to extend really on behalf of our entire board and cabinet team and our district, um, our hearts go out to Mr. and Mrs. Hillman, who are two pretty amazing individuals themselves, um, to her sisters, to her nieces and nephew who she adored. Um, we, our hearts are with all of you. And we know that this loss for all of you um, is so tremendous. And as we have seen throughout the district, um, whether it was at Franklin High School, Churchill High School, or again, as Mr. Centers mentioned, the many, many alumni who have shared um, the memories and the impact um, that Ms. Hillman made on them. And, um, the, her wonderful Kappa colleagues and Churchill um, administrative team and her Churchill colleagues pulled together um, just shortly after her passing and gave students the opportunity to share memories of, um, of Angie and memories of what she means to each of them and how she has impacted them. And really, when you speak of a life well lived, albeit far too short, without question, you could not have heard those remarks and not known that Angie Hillman's was a life well lived. And I, I'll share with you this evening a, a little um, piece of her that I know exists across this district. Um, this is one of her love beads. So Angie was known for sharing her, her love beads. Um, she uh, gave them to students when they were uh, had a big performance or a test coming up, gave them to colleagues um, as a way to thank them or acknowledge them. And I am certain that across this district, there are literally thousands of love beads that exist on people's desks um, or in a special um, place in their home. Um, and it just serves as just one more way that Angie shared a love and light with, with those around her. So um, again, to the Hillman family, we send our love to you, um, and we, we take with us many wonderful, wonderful memories of Angie. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Are there any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion, a sympathy resolution for Angela Hillman, teacher and CAPA director, motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Acosta. Mrs. Bradford, will you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes, President Burton. Yes. Thank you, the motion passes. The next item on our agenda this evening is item nine, uh, hearing from board members and 9A is the selection of candidate for MASB Board of Directors. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Acosta. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District designate Gina Walker as the Region 8 candidate for the MASB Board of Directors and direct the Executive Assistant of the Board of Education to cast the vote accordingly. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Are there questions or comments by board members? 
this uh, is an obligation of the uh, of each board of education uh, to place this vote. Uh, there were four candidates before us, uh, all of whom uh, were very passionate in their work, um, and and each brought a different char different characteristics and different qualifications to this role. Uh, after much discussion at our previous uh, committee of the whole meeting, uh, there uh, there were two that really stood out, uh, Bridget McQuiston and Gina Walker. And uh, after quite a bit of discussion, uh, the board has, has come to the conclusion that Gina Walker will be the one that we are going to put forth uh, on behalf of Livonia Public Schools. Uh, this is for a three-year seat. Uh, we'll be serving alongside Mr. Centers, who's also going to be serving uh, and representing Livonia well. Are there any other questions or comments on this item? Mrs. Acosta. I just wanted to add um, thank you to the community for their input um, and their feedback on these candidates and it helped lead us to our decision. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion for the selection of candidate for MASB Board of Directors, supported or motion made by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Acosta. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bradford says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 9B, superintendent evaluation. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bradford. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the evaluation of Superintendent Andrea Oquist, completed on February 22, 2021, via the MASB Superintendent Evaluation Tool, for which she received a rating of highly effective. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, Mrs. Bradford, would you like to speak to this item as, as personnel chair? And if not, I will go ahead and do so. Um, sure, you can go ahead. I, I give the floor to you if you'd like to speak yep. toward it. I would be honored. Um, we have uh, one of the best superintendents in the state of Michigan. Uh, that's not only our opinion, but our area school districts uh, this year, as an example, have been contacting Livonia Public Schools to speak to Andrea Oquist to say Livonia Public Schools has been so successful throughout this school year. Can you please share what you know so that our districts can model what, what your district has accomplished? Um, that is just one example of, of many, many uh, that, uh, that, that highlight how effective Mrs. Andrea Oquist is in this job. Uh, the, the Board of Education has basically three roles, that is to hire and evaluate the superintendent, to set policy for the district, and to set our long-term strategic goals and align the budget to those. Uh, we take the, the hiring and evaluation of our superintendent very, very seriously. Uh, with such a superb superintendent, uh, while we do take a lot of thought and a lot of time, it makes the job easy uh, in terms of, of uh, coming to quick consensus on the many items that we have got to evaluate uh, Mrs. Oquist on. Uh, she is a superb professional. She knows education inside and out. She has been in Livonia Public Schools since she was, I believe, a kindergartner uh, and all through her professional career. Uh, Mrs. Oquist is on top of knowing education in and out, she is superb at communication with our team of professionals who educate our children every day, with our families who entrust their little learners to us. Uh, it is my honor to work alongside Mrs. Oquist. I know that our cabinet feels the same way. Uh, you are a superb leader. Uh, you have navigated, looking at just this year, navigated uh, our district surviving and thriving in this COVID situation uh, by starting last June uh, and assembling a, a group of 250 individuals to begin uh, breaking down into committees and subcommittees to tackle each 
possible item that we would have to cover in order to get our students back into a learning environment, be that in-person education or a virtual education. And, is, and you've done it as successfully as any district I have seen. Um, it is our honor to, to rate you as highly effective and, effective. and if there was something higher than that, I certainly would do it. <laughs> um, that is my opening. And I would like to open it up to any other board members who would like to share their thoughts. Mr. Centers. So uh, I've talked a couple of times tonight about what a year it's been. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this when we we're going over the evaluation for Mrs. Oquist that there's been years in Livonia Public Schools that have been difficult. There's been cho choices to build buildings, to close facilities, to redistrict, to do all sorts of different things, but the stakes were never as high as this year. Um, this was the most difficult year in the history of Livonia Public Schools. And I think uh, it would, it takes someone who, um, who is extremely thoughtful, who is collaborative, uh, who was always thinking steps ahead. I remember doing phone calls with Mrs. Oquist in April and we're talking about, you know, what things are gonna look like, you know, in November, December, you know, we're just always thinking steps and steps ahead and keeping the long view in mind. Um, you know, keeping the focus on students and um, really achieving our goals. Uh, it is a tremendous job this year. Uh, last year, last several years, she's been highly effective, but um, this year, uh, I will agree with uh, Mrs. Burden if there was a a higher category, she she certainly earned it. Um, she also has developed and uh, nurtured a cabinet that is just really collaborative and really effective and uh, that works extremely hard and is well connected all around our district. And uh, that is uh, extremely valuable. And I think finally, Every time I talk to parents and teachers, it, it's so rare that someone doesn't bring up her leadership. Um, there, there is certainly acknowledgement in this community that uh, we have someone that knows us so completely that um, takes the time to uh, connect with people and to know them personally. And that makes a huge difference. Uh, there's been a lot of trust built with parents and teachers, not just this past year, but her entire career here. So uh, we are very fortunate to have Mrs. Oquist here. Um, this is our yearly opportunity to gush about her. Um, so thank you so much for all the work you're doing, all the work, uh, the leadership of our whole staff, because we've been so impressed this year by everyone. Thank you, Mr. Centers. Mrs. Bradford. Thank you, President Bur Burton. I'd like to continue the gush. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. <laughs> Oquist. But, uh, she deserves, she, she, I'm sure she doesn't enjoy this as much because I know her heart is just born and bred here in Livonia Public Schools. And I, I think you're the ever positive Mrs. Oquist. And, and you know, with a year like we've had, uh, it takes a great leader to uh, lead us through uh, the, these trying times. And um, I'm so thankful uh, to have, uh, to be involved in this district and with the leadership skills that you give to everybody. And you just, um, I don't know, you radiate such a, a great vibe for everybody that um, it makes us all better. And I wanna thank also the cabinet, um, uh, it's, it takes a village to do what we did. When I, I think back on this year and I, good Lord, uh, just uh, getting the technology up and running. And then on top of it, getting a food program, distribution program going. And um, when she was uh, highlighting some of the things that happened throughout this year, the graduation ceremonies and, um, oh my goodness, the special ed program and the IEPs that had to go on. Um, it's short of remarkable uh, what happened and what transpired. And I'm just so impressed. Uh, the fact that um, 
our district is able to be in class uh, five days a week um, is nothing short of just amazing. So um, we've had lots of challenges and, and I think you face them head on and with such grace and positivity. Um, so just really proud of the work we do here and we will continue to work and any problem that comes our way, I think with such a great cabinet and group, we really can solve it and make, make it better. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. Um, we have lots of room to grow. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, especially in our student achievement. And as we move forward, how we're going to um, continue educating our kids. But um, I, I think we're just on the right path and I'm thankful for everybody. Uh, and uh, um, I'm, I'm just amazed at, at, at what we've done and created. So we will continue to work hard. And I know um, Mrs. Oquist will continue to lead and guide us. And uh, I wanna thank our, everybody who um, participates and helps out every single day. Um, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, we're doing it. I, I think we do really well despite the circumstances. So thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Bonifield. Thank you, President Burton. Um, I know we're probably gonna repeat a lot of the same stuff uh, because it's all true. Um, Mrs. Oquist, I think one of the biggest things we talk about uh, with the cabinet and the board um, and being a team is uh, Mrs. Oquist leads by example. And she is the best example um, around in it it permeates through the entire district. Um, and as much as we gush about Mrs. Oquist, um, is she never will rest on her laurels. Um, she will be the first one to point things out in, uh, when we're, when we're going through evaluations about, you know, where she thinks we need to do better, um, and always striving to do better. Um, yeah. We, we talk about a lot about uh, the pride we have in our district, um, but we're never stopping. We're, ne we're never um, not moving forward or looking for a better way or looking for something uh, different to do or to be able to improve. And she is just um, a fantastic leader and I, I, I can't say enough. So thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Mrs. Acosta and then Mrs. Jarvis. Um, just really quickly wanted to say thank you, uh, Mrs. Oquist, for um, being so knowledgeable. I know that doesn't just happen, doesn't just come about, but that you've taken the time to, um, even during this pandemic, people are coming to you because you've taken the time to learn all there is to know about how to lead during these times, and we appreciate uh, the time that you take to do that. I also wanted to say um, that leadership component is essential. And it's even most significant in that in the areas that we look to see some improvement, you're focusing already on those areas and looking for ways to bump those areas up. So kudos and thank you. Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, Mrs. Oquist, you have reached a level where now you are not simply an exceptional Superintendent, you are now recognized by your peers and they turn to you for guidance. You are a mentor. You are the lighthouse that helps direct other districts in addition to our own through these perilous waters. Um, you are the, the lighthouse. You, you tend the flame in the lighthouse. You are, I mean, a lighthouse doesn't just function on its own. It has to have those lens is maintained, it has to have the glass cleaned, it has to have the flame nurtured. Um, and if Livonia is at all a lighthouse district, it's because you are the keeper of our flame. And for that, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. I had to be last. Many of you, you know, we, we've talked about uh, how you've led us through these this past year but i i tend to look at it in broader terms 
Uh, most of you, other than President Burton, were not on the board when uh, Dr. Leopa uh, left us to go to RISA. And we went through a process to try and find a superintendent. And Mrs. Oquist was our interim. She had the title of interim. And President Burton and I talked about it on numerous occasions that, you know, we we didn't want to push. We wanted to see and let this play out by itself. And I was at the MASB conference in Traverse City and Dr. Leopa happened to be there. And he said to me, I have some news. And I said, pray tell what might that be? And he advised that he had had a conversation and little did we know at that time that Dr. Leopold was putting a little more pressure on Mrs. Oquist than, than we did. And he said, I think Andrea is willing to remove the interim from her title. And I think I got a hold of Colleen and I said, you can't say anything yet, but I think this is very good news because we had been going through a superintendent search at that time. And quite honestly, um, we didn't see anyone that measured up to what we saw in Andrea. And we were, we couldn't have been more pleased uh, when she officially announced that she was willing to remove the interim from her title. I have spent uh, the last three years as president, uh, with the distinct pleasure of meeting with Andrea significantly, uh, at least every Wednesday for our, for our meetings, um, and generally more often than that. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone with as uh, great a passion for what she does. Uh, she lives and breathes uh, this district. To say that she's not concerned about the evaluation would probably be a disservice, but it's secondary to her. What is out front is the, the uh, education of our students, the staff, the teachers. Uh, that's where the passion is. That's where she is such a tremendous leader. And we are forever grateful that, that you uh, came to us and uh, said, I will be the superintendent. So as, uh, uh, as the past president, um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. Thank you. I think we've gone through everybody. Any else, any other comments? Yes, thank after you so much, President Burton. And um, to, <laughs> to each of you, um, I am, you know, beyond uh, humbled, and we could have stopped definitely uh, a, a, a while ago. But um, I'm, I'm, oh, no. you know, certainly, certainly grateful um, for for each and every um, piece of you know feedback that you shared, not only in our evaluation conference, um, but this evening, this evening, um, and really for your continued partnership and guidance and support. Um, each and every step of the way. And I, I really want to just say a, a couple of special acknowledgements and, and thank yous. And I know I, I shared this with you uh, during our, um, our time together in, in closed session, um, but I will, I will share it with you again, um, that there are some folks with whom you know, this, this role would not be possible. And so I want to acknowledge Mrs. Wozniak, who is our tremendously talented, caring and gifted um, executive assistant um, to the board and to and to me. Um, if you want to talk about somebody who is knowledgeable um, and who is who is willing to do um, whatever it takes to help someone, um, she is you know she is the the, the first voice that many people hear um, and as they as they come to Livonia Public Schools. And um, I am grateful every single day for what she does on behalf of this entire district, most of which people uh, do not see, but I know our cabinet team knows and I know our board team knows how very valuable she is. So thank you so much, Jill, uh, for being my partner in this work each day. And then um, we, I know I 
I know I shared a lot about our cabinet team uh, tonight in, um, as we went through sections of the evaluation, because quite frankly, um, you know, they, they, are, they are each and every spoke in this wheel. Um, and I, I know you know, and I know you hold them in as high esteem as I do. Um, and, I, and I would say just this year, but uh, this is no different than the way this cabinet uh, leads and um, dedicates themselves to our students, um, to our staff and to our school community each and every day. You will not find a team like this anywhere, period. Um, and so each of them are experts in their own right, but if you could see the way that they um, not only collaborate with each other, but contribute um, to what each and every department does, I think that's what makes our team um, you know, what they are. And so I just wanna thank my cabinet colleagues for, for showing up and being there each and every day. Um, so we are, uh, we are grateful for our board team and our cabinet team. And I know the folks around this screen realize uh, how, how important that is on behalf of really everyone that we serve. So thank you all very, very much. I, I wouldn't wanna be anywhere else. We are so glad. <laughs> That would be our biggest nightmare. Oh, <laughs> uh, any other comments? Mrs. Bradford. Round two. <laughs> I can start again. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's all I wanted to say. Round all two. Right. I'm sorry, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea, again. All right. Any other comments? Mr. Johnson. I, I just wanted to thank Jeff. <laughs> For, very, for, for letting us have Andrea uh, for as much as he, he, he's got to be sitting at home going, where's my wife? <laughs> so thank you, Jeff. And as a, as a continuation. He's the best. Of, yes. As a continuation of Mr. Johnson's comments earlier, I know, Andrea, that it was concerned for your family that, that, uh, that kept you from putting your name in, in as an applicant initially for this position. And that's why you took it only as, a, as an interim position. Um, we're so thankful to your family uh, and that it worked out with them uh, for you to be able to have enough of a work-life balance to take on this role. So uh, it's the, the interim worked out well as a trial run there while we were looking elsewhere. And, and I'm glad we didn't find anybody else that would do the job as well, because we, we're certainly thrilled beyond belief that, uh, that it worked out for you uh, personally to take this job uh, professionally. And we hope that you do it for a long, long time. <laughs> I tell you that frequently, I know. <laughs> Any other comments from board members? Seeing none, we have a, a motion for superintendent evaluation, motion made by Mrs. Bonifield, I'm sorry, by Mrs. Bradford, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, Mrs. Bradford, would you please take the roll? Mrs. Bradford says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The final item on our agenda this evening is hearing from board members. Uh, are there board members who would like who have anything that they would like to share this evening? I don't see anything. Um, I do have one piece of heartbreaking news about one of our former students and dear friend of our family. Uh, those of you who know uh, Ted, or as we all know them, Teddy Drews, uh, Stevenson graduate from uh, 07. Uh, so he's just 31 years old, uh, passed away suddenly a few days ago of an apparent uh, heart situation that took hold very, very quickly. Um, he leaves behind a wife and a young baby. And we would like to ask that those uh, within Livonia Public Schools keep uh, Teddy's family in your prayers and his friends in your prayers. Uh, and it is a reminder yet again, so similar to, to Angie Hillman. Uh, don't take for granted one moment that you have with the people that you love. And we all assume that we'll be there tomorrow, but sometimes we aren't, uh, so make sure you tell the people in your life that you love that you do. Um, it's 
it's it's, it's just very sad. Um, again, I ask that you keep the Drews family in your prayers at this time. Are there any other uh, comments from board members? Seeing none, uh, we are adjourned for this evening. We thank you for those of you who have joined us for this evening, and uh, I wish you a nice one. Thank you. Good night, all.